In this video, we want to consider the operation of SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. SNMP has been around for a long time. We've got a few different versions of SNMP out there. First, let's take a look at some of the basic building blocks of SNMP. First, we have some sort of an SNMP server that we refer to as an SNMP manager. This SNMP manager might be part of an NMS, or Network Management System. For example, Cisco has the Cisco Prime infrastructure that would fall under that category, and the SNMP SNMP Manager is going to receive information from managed devices. And these managed devices, we call them SNMP agents. And as we see here on screen, a switch could be an SNMP agent. A router could be an SNMP agent. We could have lots of devices in our network, including other servers, that could run an SNMP agent and respond or send information to an SNMP server. And inside of these SNMP agents, they have something called a MIB, a Management Information Base. And different types of devices can have different MIBs. A MIB contains a collection of object identifiers called OIDs. And these OIDs define what information on a managed device can be read or even set from the SNMP manager. And information can be exchanged in a couple of different ways between an SNMP manager and an SNMP agent. For example, the SNMP manager could query an SNMP agent and ask for the value of one of the variables in one of the object identifiers in a device's MIB. So we could query, we can pull information from an agent. However, the agents, they can proactively send notifications up to an SNMP manager. And this notification is called a trap notification. These agents can watch for certain thresholds to be exceeded, as an example. And if a particular threshold, such as CPU or memory utilization, exceeds a certain value, without waiting to be queried, an SNMP agent can proactively tell the SNMP manager, hey, I just exceeded 50% of my processor utilization. And to summarize what we've talked about thus far, we said that SNMP is made up of really three primary components. An SNMP manager that's going to send queries and receive trap notifications, SNMP agents, the devices being managed, and in each of those SNMP agents we have a MIB, a management information base. And something else we should understand about SNMP is that it's available in different versions. To give you just a bit of a history lesson, when version 1 came out, the security was not all that great. SNMP devices used community strings, which we could think of as passwords. And there was a read-only community string, and there was a read-write community string. And if somebody had an SNMP manager and they pointed to a device running SNMP, they could query information from that device if they knew one of these community strings. They could read information if they had the read-only community string, or they could even set values if they had a read-write community string. And one of the big challenges that I used to notice back in the 90s, I would get equipment from different vendors and almost all of the vendors had the same default community strings. It was very common for the read-only community string to be public and the read-write community string to be private. And I would guess that many, many devices got installed in networks that had those default community strings. Not very secure. And interestingly, in version 2 of SNMP, security got a lot tighter, but it was difficult to set up. And as a result, version 2 itself never really caught on. There was a variant of version 2 that caught on, and that was version 2C. And that's very common in today's networks. And version 2C gave us some of the feature enhancements that version 2 had. For example, version 2 allowed us to retrieve a lot of information from a managed device with a single query, and we would need to send fewer queries to get the same amount of information as compared with SNMP version 1. However, because the security was so complex, the security was rolled back to using, you guessed it, community strings again. And that was version 2C. More features than version 1, but not more secure than version 1. Well, the great news is today, version 3 is starting to catch on. And version 3 does give us good security. It does encryption. It does integrity checking. It gives us authentication services. And from a design perspective, you should probably go with version 3 if you have that option. And now that we have this overview of SNMP operation, in our next video, we want to see how to set it up.